God damn it. Oh well. Oh no, that was. Hmm. Hmm. Chat. I'm out of chicken. Shame. <clears throat> Truly a shame. So, does anyone know how to look at graze boxes for things? Because... I would like to see the graze hitbox on those fucking snowballs that keep hitting me in the ass. Because you wouldn't think a bullet that small would trip me up that many times. Considering I have an easier time with these things. I just don't get it. What is it about those green bastards that makes them so difficult to dodge? Is there a secret? There's a secret in the coding? There's some special zoom coding that says that that bullet is a different bullet? I fucking love those bullets. Mm. I greatly appreciate that Rumia isn't just hitting me with the, uh, the ultimate decider. But, oh, there it is. Well, not really. It can happen on the first one, but it usually doesn't. It can happen... It happens on the second one. This, this would be the ultimate decider. And that right there, that's, uh, that's, that's the attack. You get a one in three chance that Rumia picks that attack. And then you get a chance that it just immediately comes and blocks every way out. Hmm. You can dodge the laser section without using a bomb, yes. However, it is extremely inconsistent because of where the fairies spawn being slightly random. And you're, whether or not you kill them in time is dependent on if your laser is active. The problem is that you now have two bombs for Patchy's cooldown, but a similar issue arises where you need to use those bombs in very specific spots. Otherwise you fuck everything up. Having two bombs is very nice. But the thing is, if you enter her second cooldown while still in bomb stun, you don't have the ability to crash into her to refund. And if you cannot refill, you cannot do anything else in that fight. And if you try to move towards her while you're in Master Spark lag, you will graze the lasers before you crash into her. So unless you do very specific bomb which, by the way, are still luck dependent because your initial DPS is still going to be tied to her position. Because your damage doesn't do shit from bombs and non-spells. Basically what I'm trying to say is I've done that before and I lost a run for it. Because I ended up bombing into the second phase, had no more bombs, could not crash into her in time before she made me graze a laser. So, trust me when I say that every single bomb is accounted for. Every bomb is used in the best way I could come up with. I haven't been beating my head against the wall for nothing. Ah, oh, the decider, there it is. All right, lucky break. The biggest issue with that, so you saw how I could still get out of that. The problem is if Rumia chooses to do the green circle afterwards and you checkmate, you're checkmated. Because if you move around that bullet to dodge it and you're too close to her 
and you move while that green wave is active, you will create an un undodgeable gap. You will be forced to graze. So that's why I call it the checkmate position. <clears throat> I was having so much difficulty on those nons that I started bombing demarcation to get it over with. This was before I realized I needed three bombs to deal with Cherno's second non. And at that point, I figured I'd rather my reset point be stage one than the end of stage two. So, perfect freeze. Perfect freeze is even more RNG than that. So, I'm just gonna use the bomb. Cash in the bomb. Blow Cherno to Kingdom Come. like these where I wish I had King Crimson or someone around me could just King Crimson so I can do this without realizing it just move me through time get it over with and then when I come back to I'll be like whoa all right we're done stage two and I can start stage three again that would be nice <laughs> that would be nice If you're wondering, it is entirely possible to fuck up that cooldown. <clears throat> but honestly, that's the last landmark or roadblock of the stage. This part is so consistent now that I don't really worry about it. Like, at this point, all you need to do is count to eight. If you can count to eight, then you're good to go. counted to nine, I would guarantee get hit. That's true. It's true. No one could have predicted this outcome. You know how I used to do that at one? I used to do it by pressing the bomb button and hoping that it worked. Sometimes I would end up resuming my vulnerability frames in the middle of the lasers, and I would graze one laser tick before I could press the button again. So I'm very glad that I found a consistent way through that one. I just really wish it didn't cost me three bombs. Because holy fuck, there are so many different places in this game that could use a bomb. And I didn't want Cherno's non-spell to be three of them. Ding dong. Sometimes I move too early and I get a little scared. Good pattern. If you have to squeeze through one of them, I just prefer to squeeze through the first one and get it all the way. Because its position is always consistent. However, sometimes it is impossible to get through without grazing. Hmm. Chat. When did Easter happen? I don't really remember. Oh, 
Almost body checked him. The only thing scary about doing that is that you can accidentally bump into that guy and then get hit. But going from left to right and taking them out before they shoot is the best way to get through that. Otherwise, it is a bit of a mess. Two weeks ago? No, that was April Fool's. Chad, my thumb is turning red again. Chad, it's almost been two hours. I don't know how. That's a very good starter. Big hug. Scarlet thumb. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, here we go. Back to jail. Yikes. <laughs> what if I just wait? Hmm. I need to strategize if I should just wait, but I don't know how dangerous that can be.
Oui. Um, so this is the part where I forget everything that comes next, and fuck it up. Alright. Okay, no problem, no problem. Alright, so yeah, don't give me the one in a million. <laughs>
I cannot fucking believe that happened. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. <sighs> Almost twenty hours. <sighs> Chat. I got a script to write now, don't I? Good lord. Don't ever do this to yourself. <laughs> don't ever try that. It's not fun. I knew I, I knew it could be done, but Lord. <laughs> oh my lord. Again, I I don't I don't know if what I did is the most optimized route possible, but I put a lot of time into getting things correct. I legitimately don't know how much more you can mitigate RNG. Ugh. I really don't. Like, there are just... There are just some elements of fights that you can't really do anything about. And fortunately, this time around, they all went really well. Patchy played really nice. And Sakuya did not stick a knife up my ass, basically. No, let me tell you, the fun part was practicing and figuring out that it was possible. Actually implementing it all in a single run, it gets it gets pretty hard pretty fast. Because you're just you're just doing stage one hell, and it's not even lunatic, right? You're just doing easy mode stage one hell. So two and a half minutes of just staring at Rumia stage and knowing that for two of those minutes, nothing happens, and then Rumia can choose whether or not your run gets to stage two. N O G R A Z E No grays. Wasn't even my highest score. Seven lives, 26 bombs, <laughs> two captures. <laughs> you want to save the replay? I sure do. I did it. 17 minutes, 15 seconds of raw gameplay. That one graze. <laughs> there were two, remember? Now max out the graze counter an extra. I don't know how to do that. Alright, chat. Um, Do you want to watch it again? Just so I can... You know, jerk myself off, I guess, about it. No? Yeah? No? Yeah? Give me all of it. All right, here we go. So let me explain. I guess I can take this opportunity to explain exactly what I'm doing, because again, most of this is, this is hours of practice and routing. A lot of the practice was trial by fire, and I will admit, uh, because I didn't get any grades at all in stage one the first time I ever tried it without a bomb, I was so confident that it wouldn't be a problem that I didn't even practice it. And at that point, that's when Rumia started to, uh, you know, happen. So obviously, the beginning of the stage is very easy. 
everything Rumia does here is consistent up to the fourth attack. The fourth attack is a scatter shot. Usually you'll take her out at this point right here. I like to move back to the left to take out the fairies that's over there. Uh, only one of these fairies drops Big P, by the way. Only one of them. But one of them will drop it. That is, that is something important to note. You can get your power up to... The highest I've ever gotten my power up to in stage 1 was 81, and that was after Rumia. <clears throat> yeah, watching my replay of this is... <laughs> this is 100% for my ego, that's for sure. Now again, point items aren't really a necessity, but I prefer to have the security... I prefer to have the security of a point total because you will need that ex extra extend to deal with Sakuya. And even though you're not going to need it till the very end, you never know for sure. So again, that green wave there, sometimes you can just get trapped. Everything that Rumia throws at you is homed in on you in some capacity. So you can bait it, but the problem is that not everything is exact and she does move. So you see here, you need to be perfectly still or you create undodgeable gaps. Because what happens is you get the opening in the rice, then you get the snowball in between the rice gaps and it's impossible to squeeze through it. So then demarcation, you do a stepping ladder motion. Rumia's movement can kind of factor which way you want to move it. For the most part, I actually did it very risky here. Normally I go left and then right twice, or right and then left twice, but that worked out I suppose. And that's stage one. I'm so glad this is over. <laughs> Alright, and now you just hug the bottom of the stage and you go pew 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 pew, and you grab the raining fun. I can't believe I got this in the first time I streamed it, but you also have to remember that I spent 16 hours of off-stream playing. Yeah, so there, there's there, nothing actually shoots at you at this point, so there is nothing stopping you from just doing this. And usually, I think your power average is around 98 here. I have good power this time around, so it gets to about 105. But usually when I get to die, you say it's between 897 to 102. It doesn't really matter, though. I don't know how much your damage actually increases until the game straight up says power up. So, yeah. Either way, you're not taking her out in one cycle, but with good teleports, you can get through it fast. And the more time, the faster you take out that you say, the more time with the butterflies you have. And the butterflies just kind of drop a bunch of free power, and it's a good way to get full power. It's not like the ice section is particularly difficult, but to move out of the way to grab power, you have to let the fairies come down. And while their bullets aren't exactly scary, it only takes one bullet to end the entire run, so, you know. I'd rather have max power here, so I don't even need to think about it. You can also be cheeky in POC, because POC is fun. Oh no, but by the time I reached Sakia's first non, I'm pretty sure I wanted to throw up, but I didn't, so I'm here now. <laughs> but the pressure was very much on. So yeah, as you can see, that one can be consistently done in the beginning every time because she doesn't move from her initial spot. Her movement is random on the uh, second half of it though, so it's basically just misdirecting everything. Put your orbiters to her feet and stand in place and you will never graze it. You can accidentally graze Icicle Fall if your position is incorrect despite its massive safe zone. You can also time it out if you go behind her, but uh, well, you don't have to. And then count to eight. After the 8th bullet, you press your laser, your laser will coincide with hers, and your laser will end right when her laser begins. Do this three times and you get through this. Trust me, you can try to do this every other way you want. I did. This is the best method. Perfect freeze is 100% RNG, and it's honestly just better you spend your last bomb here to get through it so you can move on to stage 3. Alright, and stage 3 always starts the same way. You go up to that line, I know you can see it, parallel to the cloud, crash into that thing. 
You can get max power here if you want, but I prefer to hold 127 because I think it's better to have a safety clear later in the stage than at the beginning. Although you do sometimes have to dodge power items as a result, and that's not very fun. So you just kind of stream. Start on the left, take out the snowball fairies, go to the right, take out the snowball fairies, find a path back to the left, take out the snowball fairies, find a path back to the right, take out the snowball fairies. Then you want to stay to the right because of the way these things come down from the screen. It's better if you're on the right side to stream to the left. So you want to let them shoot, and then when the other fairies show up, stream and there you go and you just do that again hmm. all right and then you get to mailing again mailing's cooldown is ex this pattern is basically the same every time but there is a little variation that can make it ungrazable or un non grazable so you have to dodge one of them I just prefer to dodge the first one right away to get it over with and then this is just again Pretty sure it's static, but the way it starts is random. But you're always going to be able to get through it with the bomb. So it's no problem. Grab your 1-up. Pick your side of the screen. I actually fucked up here, but I got a full power clear to bail me out from the kunai. And then you want to ride the side of the screen to kill these things fast so they don't shoot as much. And you want to do it again. But then as soon as you kill the middle ones, you want to prioritize the blue kunai. I can't believe I didn't grace that bullet. Wait for the bullets to pass, then get to the middle, and this is where you get a lot of score. Once those stop, left or right, kill the one fairy on the sides, hog the corner, and 99% of the time, you're good. Alright, mailing's cooldown. Non-spell one. It's, uh, not actually consistent, but I did make it consistent. So that was a good pattern where she doesn't initially shoot you because your bomb will be able to last up to the final shot, like that. And you just want to crash into her. I crashed into her a bit early, so that means I have to dodge one additional little wave. The annoying part about that is that sometimes that last little wave does come out and it comes out really fast and it's hard to react to it. And then Rainbow Wind Chime is spinning and it's not as bad as you think, but it does look very close. You do get very close when you're going behind her, and it's a little scary to initiate, but honestly, I did not mess it up very often in practice, because there is quite a, a decent amount of room between it. Hmm. Alright, and you can get a full power here if you want, but I prefer not to. Hold your bomb until those get close enough to you. I like to try and hold my bomb until the lasers become active to double the damage. Then you just have to deal with a little bit of spewing. Remember, it's her whole health bar. Having her be at the top of the screen is very fortunate because the power will take longer to fall, which means you can clear more bullets with a full power clear. Unfortunately there, that wasn't very good position. And now, it's going to take out some of the bullets, but it's it's it was pure luck that I didn't lose there, basically. She didn't move far enough away that I couldn't damage her to the spell card. And then Colorful Rain is 100% a bomb every single time. That's it, you just bomb the final spell card. The hardest part of that fight is the first non and the third non. Because the second non, second non can still fuck you up, but you mostly just bomb through it. And Rainbow Wind Chime, you can mess it up too. That's mostly just a game of timing. So then you start this stage, take out one side, and then go give the fairy a big hug, get your refill. Pick one side of the screen. As you can see, I'm very fond of going to the left side of the screen because I'm left-handed, so I like starting there. And any pattern that requires me to start on the right freaks me out. The second set of fairies always drops big P, so I just full power clear here to get max power and to deal with that. The reason I don't bother to hold out for not max power is because I'm pretty sure without max power this upcoming section is not consistent, and sometimes this section isn't consistent to begin with. So taking out these fairies causes a full screen of uh, full power clear themselves, but I honestly think that whether or not they die is dependent on if your laser is active at the time, and whether or not they want to decide to shoot at you in a bad way, so I've, you know, I've lost runs doing that before. Books, hold your bomb until this Q right here, bing. I like holding my bomb there, because that'll get you through the books. It'll end, the books will get one or two extra waves, and Quakamu will show up. You're free to do however you want here, but I recommend just pressing the bomb button as soon as the ring gets close to you. 
Because even though the hitbox isn't as big as you think, the graze box is quite big. You can't squeeze through them. Do not lose that bomb. And then get to the middle of the screen and take these next three waves for free points. Originally, I wanted to have a full power clear for this upcoming section, but I realized that it was way too risky to try it. So then this... This part is 100% RNG, honestly, and considering it's like 15 minutes into the run, it's pretty, pretty ass. So you basically want to take out one section. If you get through the first section, just bomb through the next one. Either way, you will most likely have to bomb once, but even one bomb will only get you through two waves. This section I don't fully understand, but I understand that everything is aimed at you, so you're supposed to stream it a little bit. However, something weird happened here. And I just rolled with it. Normally I just stream it. But I had a couple fuck ups obviously. And it seems like standing in place and waiting worked out. But I didn't really get to test that theory. Because the run finished. So this is left. Middle. Left. Right. Middle. Oh sorry. Right. Then middle. Then right. Then left. Now the thing about this is. I know how it works. But every now and again, they manage to get a bullet in anyway. And if things go wrong, things go wrong. And the last section is just these three fairies that cause full power clears. Again, it just kind of feels like a matter of if the game wants to give it to you. And all of those point items should give you your final extend for Sakuya. And then Patchy. Patchy, you always want to start on the right side of her. And then head towards the left when the laser disappears. Get back to the right side of her and stream towards the left. If she moves with you, that's great because the next set of lasers comes that way. Similar idea, but this time you want to make sure to bomb for the initial third wave because she shoots homing shots. And at this point, it's just pray that you have enough DPS to get through it. Focus approach her and crash into her when you can. That'll stop her lasers. Again, get to the right side of the screen and stream it. Hopefully your big P goes there too. And the exact same dealio as last time. And then once you feel uncomfortable, bomb. There's less HP for this cooldown, so you can bomb a little bit earlier, just as long as the bomb gets you through that laser wave. And then that's the end of the fight, basically. Lazy Triathlon won't really hit you, because it's really slow, and it starts really high up. So you can just wait, and then bomb. And here, the full power clear doesn't really do anything, but it does help a little bit. I recommend trying to wait at least until the laser becomes active for Master Spark, so you can get through this without it running out. Because you can see here, it did run out, and if Patchy had been in a worse position, she would have pushed me against a wall and I wouldn't have been able to get through it. So, Emerald Megalith is a little dicey. Because even though it is a spell card, it's a full HP bar. Alright, then stage 5. Start up here. There are two fairies. Pick one of them. Kill it. Stream downwards. It'll always create the same pattern like that, and you can immediately go to the left and take out these fairies coming in from the side. Those, shoot, those shots are aimed at your position, so you want to bait them and then move to the right. At this point, wait for those to clear. Get up here and hug this fairy. Hugging the fairy will clear their shots. Grab your big P. The other fairy that you kill will also have a big P, and that'll give you max power. And this is just a matter of praying, really. As you see there, if you get above them at that point, they can no longer hurt you, so I recommend trying that. But for the most part, that's RNG. Wait for the third wave of fairies to come down there before you Master Spark, because the Master Spark will t extend into this part and kill two of those fairies. And then there's less you have to worry about. A proper uh, Doing that section proper will get two, three waves, basically. Alright, and then you time out Sakuya for 40 seconds and you hope that she doesn't stick a knife up your ass. Which she almost did. Chat, I'm gonna be real with you. When she did this, I am, I am not sure how I got away with it. I am flabbergasted that that did not grace. <laughs> that was unbelievably stressful. <laughs> Alright, now the benefit of waiting this out is it skips misdirection and it skips a half of the bullet section. But remember you need to get back to the bottom of the screen once it ends because they're all going to come from the sides. I recommend waiting as long as possible to pop a bomb here. 
because the goal, basically the goal of this second bomb is to use it to take out the next section. So this pattern wasn't fortunate for that, so I use it early, but it'll take out these two, it'll take out these two, and preferably takes out these two, but they are aimed at you. So my position was still correct, and you want to do slight streaming. Slight streaming, but I, I fucked it up, but it still managed to work out. Because what you're originally supposed to do is kill the ones on the left and then stream to the right and crash into those. But it worked out that I managed to kill enough of the ones on the right and also crash into it. And this is pure RNG. You have to hope that she shoots something and moves far away. So her knives take as long as possible to reach you because knife hitboxes have generous grace. Alright, and then the spell card is incredibly to the point. You just press bomb when she shoots and her HP bar will decrease really fast and she won't have any time to actually fire back because your laser lasts that long. And then this cooldown. This this non-spell can fuck you. Which it almost did. So she moved back, which is very, very nice. Because as you can see, I kind of barely got that one. And then you want to give her a big hug on Luna Clock. And then as soon as you hear the see the knives, press the bomb button. And then, as you can see, the laser will always extend. Full power clear will take care of this, so hold on as long as possible. Get as much damage as you can. This is actually the easiest cooldown because you have both a bomb and a full power clear. And the knives are kind of slow. So then you take care of that. And then manipulating dolls, exactly the same as the other spell cards. Just wait for them to show up. Press the bomb button. And, uh... Watch it. Watch the magic, really. Would this be doable on default lives? Um, no. Because default lives would take away three lives, aka nine bombs. And even, even with my testing of uh, segments that can be handled without needing to bomb, you're still a few bombs short. Hmm. Hmm. Cheerno's lasers are not dodgeable. If you uh, if you're trying to not graze them, trust me. You cannot, you will not, you absolutely will not no graze that without a bomb. The lowest, the lowest amount I could get was two bombs, and even that was really close. Anyway, chat. Um, I apologize, but I was supposed to practice Looney mode. And, uh, it's, it's kind of late, so I'm done streaming, basically.